Hey friends, Anne here, and I am so glad that you have joined us for worship today. This month, we have been reading through the book of Proverbs, and every single one of our teachings has been highlighting some reoccurrent theme through Proverbs. Today, we are going to be in Proverbs chapter 22, so go ahead and grab your Bibles if you can. If not, we'll have the scriptures on the screen. And today, we're going to be talking about what God has to tell us about our work. You know, for many of us, we work and we work and we work and we work. We work in our jobs and we work at our home and we work in the community and we work in our family. We work in our, in our, with our friends. We just do a lot of work. And so today we're going to be talking about, well, what does God have to tell us about our work? And why do we have to do work? So many of us spend our lives trying to just get through our work so we can get done with our work and get on with the rest of our lives. Um, but there is purpose in work. Did you know that studies have been done about the actual amount of time that people spend of their lives in work? And the average is that the average person spends one third of your life doing work. So work in an office or in a job setting, work at home, work in the community, just work. And so if a third of our lives is spent in work, I think that it's important for us to know as believers what God has to tell us about that part of our lives. So let's look and just scratch the surface today and learn what we can about what God would tell us about work. So the first thing that I want to look at is what is the world's idea of work and purpose of work versus God's idea or purpose of work. So the world pretty much says that work is a way of getting what I want. Um, I have to work so that I can get the things that I want or I have to work so I can feed my family. I have to work so I can live in a home. I have to work. I have to work. And this idea of work puts in our minds that work is just something to get through. It's almost like a punishment. Like we cannot wait until we get off work. We cannot wait until we don't have to work anymore. And it's almost as if work is something to be endured instead of something to be embraced. God has a much different idea of work. God's idea of work is that work is for the, um, is the way that I live out my purpose. That work is purposeful. It's the way that God has created to use our gifts in the world, to impact the world, to do this mission that he has given us to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. He's given us that mission to make disciples. And so work is one of the ways that we do that. It's a way that we live out our purpose. I'd like to explore a couple of verses before we get to Proverbs, just to kind of give us a better understanding of how work fits into our spiritual life, really, and, and holistically in our, own, in our whole life. So work was instituted right at the very beginning. You know, it seems to me that if God didn't value work or it was just something to be endured, that that would have been kind of like a punishment after the fall, right? After the fall of mankind when, when sin entered the world. But actually work was something God gave us that was good. It happened before the fall, before man fell from grace and sinned. It happened before sin entered the world. So work is not a punishment for our sin. In Genesis 2 verse 15, it says this, The Lord God placed the man in the Garden of Eden to tend and watch over it. Friends, if you've had a garden, and especially a garden as big as the Garden of Eden, you know that was a lot of work. To tend and watch over it. Adam was given work in the very beginning. God could have given Adam anything that he wanted, but what he gave him was a job. What he gave him was a purpose. Adam wasn't just to sit there and just to do nothing. He gave Adam a purpose, and he gives each and every one of us a purpose, an opportunity to work, to do things that matter, that do things that have meaning. So even if you don't find that purpose in the job that you are in, in the, in the career that you are in, there is still plenty of work to do in your home, in the community, in the church. There's always an opportunity for work. 
And that work that you do in all of those spheres is what gives you that sense of purpose. God gave us work. And he said that it was to live out our purpose for which he had created us. For Adam's case, it was to tend and watch over the garden. But you and I have different purposes that he has made us for and created us for, different gifts. And he still expects us to use those gifts for a purpose. And later on, we read in Ephesians chapter 4, 28, um, this is at a time where, um, where Paul is talking about what it means to be people who are living in the light. So this is what it means to be a Christian who has been transformed, who has the Holy Spirit living and shining out from within you. This is what it looks like. And he goes through this whole list of things that we should do and should not do. And work is part of these things. He says, if you are a thief, quit stealing. Instead, use your hands for good, hard work and then give generously to others in need. This is one of the purposes of work. It's not just so I can get what I want or I can get what I need, which is how kind of the world sees work. It's a much bigger purpose. It's not just about me, but it's about the way that I can use my gifts and turn that around and give back to others in the world. Good, hard work. And to not just use that to gain something for myself, but then to give it back to others. So a lot is being said here about work. And in Proverbs, we read about the kind of workers we are to be. So let's go ahead and dig into Proverbs 22 and see what, um, and see what the author has to say. So we're going to skip around a little bit and hit about five different verses, five or six different verses. The first one is in verse 1 of chapter 22. Choose a good reputation over great riches. Being held in high esteem is better than silver or gold. Friends, a good worker is one that has integrity. Now, when it talks about a good reputation, a good reputation isn't just built by doing good things or making people happy. A good reputation is built by being a person of integrity, that your yes means yes and your no means no, that you are consistent, that you're living for the sake of others, not living a selfish life centered around yourself and what you want and what you can gain. You gain a good reputation by being a person of integrity, a person who is becoming more like Jesus, a person who is a true disciple. So this doesn't have anything to do with pleasing people. It doesn't have anything to do with making others happy. What it has to do is being a person that reflects Jesus because Jesus is the example of really pure integrity. So once again, choose a good reputation, integrity over great riches. Being held in high esteem, the way that others see you as you interact, as you do your work, as you lead your life, is better than silver or gold. Verse 3 says this, a prudent person foresees danger and takes precautions. The simpleton goes blindly on and suffers the consequences. So maybe prudent isn't really a word that you use much. Um, I know that I don't really say the word prudent very often, but really what prudent means is a sensible person, a person that plans, a person that is thoughtful, a person that is not um, just spur of the moment, a person that is not not um, just thinking off the cuff and just reactive to the environment, to the things that they're experiencing in their work. But a prudent person is one who plans, is one who looks, who is thoughtful, who is sensible and says, hey, I think that I see something up ahead. We need to take precaution. Why is that important in your work? It's not important just so you can protect yourself, although that is important. But even more so, it's so that you can protect and care for the other people that you work with. 
Why should we be sensible? Why should we be prudent and thoughtful? Not just so we will get ahead in our work life, not just so we will be seen as someone who is so wise and wonderful, but so that we can really care for other people. If danger is coming, I want to protect myself, but also protect them. So we know that a godly worker, one that works hard, that does good work um, for to fulfill that purpose that God has given them is a person of integrity that says what they, that does what they say and means what they say. And a person who is sensible, that thinks ahead, is not impulsive, but plans ahead so that they can keep themselves safe and others safe. We're going to go on and there are several more that we're going to look at. So verse 4 says this, True humility and fear of the Lord lead to riches, honor, and long life. So there are two important characteristics of work, good work, in this verse. And the first one is that good workers are humble. They put others before themselves. They don't elevate themselves, which is what the world thinks that you do in the world of work. I get high enough in the company or I get high enough in my field that I don't have to do all of the work that I don't want to do and I can point at somebody else down below me and tell them to do that work. Friends, that is not a good work in terms of how God sees us as workers. We are to be humble. We are to do those tasks maybe that nobody else wants to do. We aren't to consider ourselves higher than or better than or bigger than. We are to be a team player. We are to pitch in. We are not to see ourselves in terms of being higher on the ladder of success than another person. And I think it's pretty interesting that they put humility with fear of the Lord. Because friends, if you have a true fear of the Lord, if you really are faithful, if you really hang on to your faith and understand who God is, you will be humble. Because you recognize and you realize that the only reason you have the work that you do, the only reason that you have the opportunities that you do, is because of God who is in all and over all and working through all. He is the one who has given you the work to do as a gift. As a gift to live out the purpose that God has for you. And friends, if you have, do not have a good understanding of who God is, then you end up elevating yourself and you see yourself as even above God. Friends, we are able to humble ourselves and put ourselves in the correct place when we have a fear of the Lord. And just like this scripture said, it leads to riches, honor, and a long life. And you may say, well, Anne, I actually live my life that way. I do that. I think that, I'm, that I am a humble person and I'm very faithful. Friends, I need you to know that God's timeline is not our timeline. We want the reward now, and God is saying, hey, we have an eternity together, children. We have an eternity together that involves riches and honor and long eternal life. And friends, when we humble ourselves and we put God first, when we are faithful in our walk, that is beautiful because we understand that that eternal reward is worth waiting for. So let's go ahead and skip ahead in Proverbs 22. And the next verse that we're going to look at is verse 13. And it says this, the lazy person claims there's a lion out there. If I go outside, I might be killed. Here's this funny way of saying, hey, lazy people are looking for every excuse they can in order to not do the work that God has given them to do. Friends, remember, work is a gift that God gives to us. It's not something to avoid, but yet a lazy person who doesn't embrace that, who doesn't understand that, thinks that work is to be avoided. So they're going to come up with any excuse that they can come up with not to do the work that is in front of them, not to do the work that God has given them to do. Friends, don't be lazy. 
Don't create excuses for yourself not to do the work that God has for you in the world. Because when you do, you miss out on the blessing. You think the blessing is staying home, doing what you want to do. But the blessing is faithfully living out God's call for you in the world. The blessing is doing good, faithful work for the honor and glory of your Father. And when you're lazy, you miss out on the blessing of that work. And finally, one more verse about good work. Verse 29 says this, Do you see any truly competent workers? They will serve kings rather than working for ordinary people. Friends, there's this question of, hey, do you see people who are effective? Do you see people who are competent, who are constantly learning and improving and getting better in their jobs and what they're doing? Friends, they're not going to just be working in haphazard ways for no purpose those people are going to be promoted in their field. They're going to be acknowledged. Friends, when you do good work with integrity, when you're not creating excuses for yourself, when you are diligent, when you're competent, when you're effective, people are going to notice and they're going to elevate you. You won't have to elevate yourself. They will elevate you and give you more responsibility and give you more good work to do because of the faithfulness that you have shown in the work that you have done. Friends, our work is to live out our purpose. It's purposeful, it's good, it's a gift. Do it well so that you can bring honor and glory not to yourself, but to God. There's one last verse that I'd like to read before we close today. And this is one that you may have heard talked about in terms of work. And that is in um, Colossians 3, verses 23 and 24, and it says this. Work willingly, important word there, Work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward and that the master you are serving is Christ. Friends, I want you to know that the work you do honors God. Your work, whether it's at home, whether it's at school, whether it's at university, whether it's in your workplace, whether it's a work in the community, whether you're volunteering or you're getting paid, whatever it is, your work is a reflection of the one who made you. And your work should honor God. People should look at the way that you work. People should look at your life and how you lead with integrity and effectiveness and diligence. How you don't elevate yourself, but you seek to elevate and, and are sensible in what you do, that you elevate others. And they should say, oh, wow, there's something different about that person. There's something different about the way that person works. Why are they so diligent? Why do they try so hard? It's not so you will please other people, but it's so that you will please your father. Please the one who created you for this work. Please the one who gave you the gift of doing this work. Your work honors God. So friends, what is your work saying about the one who created you? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I am so grateful for the gift of being in ministry with you through the work that we do. Thank you, Father, for gifting us with this work. Help us to see this work as a way of bringing honor and glory and praise to you through the way that we work and interact with the world. God, help us to be workers that are filled with integrity. Help us to be sensible people. Help us to be humble, to be faithful, to be diligent. God, help us to be the kind of workers you created us to be. And that in that work, people would look at us and that that work would point them to you. Father, renew our heart for work. 
Help us to see it as a way that we can fulfill the purpose you have given us. Help us to see it as a way that we can make disciples of Jesus Christ so that the world will be changed. Lord, be with us in our work this week. In your name I pray, amen.
So friends, today we have explored what kind of workers we are supposed to be in our job, in our home, in our community, whether we get paid, whether we volunteer, whatever that looks like, and that we are supposed to do this work not because we have to, not because we're trying to gain something from it, but in a way that honors God as a reflection and a thank you back to the one who created us for this work. Friends, we've been asking a question each and every Sunday after our message, and the question this week is the same. Who's your one? Who's the one person that God has put on your heart and your mind to share this message with? Or maybe let me ask it another way. Who is the one person that needs to see you honoring God in your work? Can you have a conversation with them? Maybe you need to apologize for the way that you have been operating at work. Maybe your attitude has not been honoring to God. Maybe you've been making excuses. Maybe you've been a little lazy. Maybe you've been a little dishonest. Maybe the one person that God wants you to reach out to this week is a person that you actually work with and a person that you need to apologize to. Or maybe there's a person that's struggling with their work and, and God is putting it on your heart and your mind to go and talk to that person about how this work that they get to do is a gift to help them see the purpose in their work and the meaning in their work. Friends, I hope that you won't miss the opportunity to reach out to that one person that God has put in your life this week. And don't forget, we are continuing to read through the Bible. We have Bible readings every single day. And we also post little devotional thoughts in our Facebook group and our WhatsApp groups. If you're not yet in our WhatsApp groups and would like to get in there, just reach out to me, Anne Bosard, through Messenger or through a private message. And I would love to put you in those groups. Or you can even leave your WhatsApp number in the comment of this video. Friends, I hope that you have a good work week this week and that you are blessed and that you are a blessing to those who are I'll see you back next week.